Uh, good morning, everyone. It is good to see you. I want to I want to do a shameless plug for our prayer room. I uh, I don't know. I ended up there this morning just to hang out, and man, there are some amazing people that go in there every Sunday morning. They're usually there around. They start showing up around nine thirty. Feel free to come early, hang out in our prayer room. It is just whoo, glory. <laughs> but. Now we get to hang out with Mary with all y'all, y'all. All y'all is good anyways. More glory. Let's worship together. Bricks and power of sin and darkness. The love is mighty. So much stronger. Who shakes the holy with holy thunder? Who leaves his breath laid on wonder? The King of glory, the King above all kings. This is amazing. Take my 
king conquers Good is the lamb slay Good is the king conquers clay Oh, you are with
ice was gray as the heavens roll. Oh, help me, Jesus. Oh, help me, Lord, help me. Oh, help me, Jesus. Oh, help me, 
this moment to respond to God in our own words.
starts with fire The whole earth shakes The whole earth shakes I see His love and mercy Washing over all our sin We will Yeah. 
everything I am for your kingdom is come. As I walk from my things, eternity. Let's sing that again here in my heart. It's in my heart and make it. Open up my eyes to the things of stone. Show me how to love like you, how to love to me. Oh, break my heart for what breaks yours. Everything I have for your kingdom. As I walk into things eternal, Jose, no, Jose, no, Jose, no, in the Jose, no, Hosanna in the heart. Hosanna in the
fishing is. Yeah, everybody? Awesome. Well, there's a a cool thing that happens about sunrise and sunset, and it's called the hatch. It's when all the bugs come out. For fly fishing to work, you have to match your flies to the hatch mimic the bait that the fish feed on during those times. And another show of hands, how many people have people in their lives that they're trying to reach for, with the gospel? Everybody should have their hand up. Just a hint. <laughs> how many of you you're not seeing fruit. It's time to match the hatch. Change your bait. Change your approach. Because if it's not working, 
change, for just. I think it's awesome that Jesus picked fishermen to be his apostles and disciples. I also think it's awesome that the one, one of them cut off a dude's ear that tried to touch Jesus before the crucifixion. I just think that's really cool that that's in the scripture. I mean, he does get rebuked for it, but, you know, he did it. Uh, Jesus did attach the ear, spoiler alert, uh, so the guy's was fine. He's probably dead now. Um, I just felt this morning God saying match the hatch. Change your approach. If it's not working, adapt. Jesus said, I will make you fishes of men moment he was talking to Peter and his brother, but he's also talking to us. I have a mentor in my life, and he gave me the secret to evangelism. It's very, 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 very simple. I was struggling with talking to people and matching the hatch and he said, Mitch, evangelism at its core is an overflow of worship. That's it. There's nothing hard about it. There's nothing hard about talking about something that you're passionate about or that you love. It's easy. Everybody does it. The trick is getting them to want what you have. How to do that is you worship. Because when we worship him, we become like him. So if you're able to stand, stand. Because right now, I feel like God is going to drop a standard in your life that is going to hold you to a higher place. And it's going to make you more attractive. You are now the hatch. feel like God is depositing a hunger and a thirst for souls. People die every day and they have no idea how good he is. It is our mandate as believers to talk about him because you wouldn't be sitting in this room if someone hadn't done that for you. The goodness of God that you experience every day in your life, that you take for granted, you would not have it if that person did not step out. So Father, I thank you that evangelism is easy, that it is an overflow of worship. We are who we worship, Father, and I thank you fire come deposit in us that hunger and that thirst for souls I'm going to go back into this wonderful song and worship him become like him
is already it. I don't even know what to do. We're going to take a little break, kind of reset. Uh, we'll continue. Uh, if you brought kids and you're part of the Relay Zone, uh, now's the time to head on over. If you brought an offering, you can bring it up. You can give online. Some of you gave all during the week. Whatever is convenient, we appreciate that. We'll see you guys back here in a few minutes.
All right. Whoa. Sorry about that. I got a little close. All right, everyone. Let's uh, head on back to our seats. Good morning. Um, I wanted to highlight, I don't think it's in the bulletin, but if you got your email from us this week, the little newsletter, there was an announcement about taking up a love offering for the police chief here in Pepperell. Um, we'd like to kind of pool our resources, do an offering. He went public with a um, fight against colon cancer and there, there's a GoFundMe to uh, help him in that endeavor. But we'd like to participate as a church body and then invite him to come to healing rooms. Don't know if he will want to do that and stuff, but we want to support him in that way as well and let him know that we're praying for his healing and expecting a miracle for him as well. So there is a... Um, link from the email if you want to give online for that love offering you can give up here just put love offering we'll know it's it's for him and we'll assign it that way um so i think that's it for announcements today but i'm glad you're here and it's my joy to introduce my favorite storyteller my husband bob switzer As far as I know, I still, I still rank number one. This is good. This is good. She's heard a lot of stories. Trust me. <laughs> Every time she asks a question, i like, well, you see, <laughs> there's so, so much more detail involved rather than just answering the question. Um, yeah. It's, it's, that's, was there anything else? Oh, uh, Bill, Bill, not Johnson. That would that would be a much bigger deal. <laughs> Bill Vanderbush is coming in a couple of weeks. That's going to be good. Just a reminder that if you want to pre-purchase your lunch, because we only have a one-hour break from noon to one, if you want to pre-purchase your lunch, we do need to know that beforehand, because they will be brought in by a caterer. And uh, yeah, so make sure we know that you're coming. And... Um, I had a really fun time uh, the, a few weeks ago because I got to do a wedding and the beautiful couple is here. So if Mr. and Mrs. O'Brien would please stand. <laughs> there they are. Yay. <laughs> I'm so excited. <laughs> so excited. I was so, I love doing weddings. I'm so excited. She as you can tell, O'Brien, right? So she clearly, she wore the best green high heels you've ever seen under a wedding dress. That when she wanted, that was picture time. And, and she was like, oh, I want a picture with you, Pastor. And I was like, great, but can, can we get the shoes? So I, the picture was just the, the three feet. That's a, his, hers, and not mine. That's, that's the photo I wanted. That was awesome. Oh, love the shoes. Love those shoes. All right. Hmm. So the, uh, a couple of weeks ago, we were, uh, well, you don't need to know all that, but <laughs> stuff, there were circumstances that got me thinking about a story in the Bible, and that was uh, one that's in all of them, right? It's, uh, it's technically the, the parable of the good Samaritan and what I, what I, I just, I just, there's stuff here that I just want to, I want to jump into. So in, in the story, an ex, you know, a law, a lawyer, an expert in the law, uh, biblical law, Torah law, he, he comes up to Jesus and he asks Jesus, you know, a question like, what do I have to do to inherit internal, eternal life? And, and what's fascinating to me on a linguist, linguistic standpoint is Luke attributes the answer to the lawyer all the other Gospels attribute the answer to Jesus. So clearly, <laughs> no, that could open up a can of worms. But what I, what I, I still like the answer, regardless of who gave it. In the, I, I chose Luke because I, I like the fact that the lawyer got it right. But anyways, he goes, so Jesus says, well, what's, what's in the law? 
And he goes, well, to love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, with all your mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. And Jesus says, you've answered correctly. Do this and you will live. I love that. And I love that somehow Mitch knew what I was talking about today. Because he's like, the gospel is just an overflow of worship. When you love God, <laughs> you can't help but preach the gospel. You just can't help it. It's just going to like vomit out of you all the time. Just bleh. I mean, in a good way, right? It's just going to sweat out of your... No, that's another bad illustration. You're just going to... Oozing is not good either. Anyways, it's just going to always come out. It's going to always come out, right? So, so whether the lawyer says it or Jesus says it, it's, it's the perfect answer. But then the lawyer says, it says to justify himself, he says, well, who's my neighbor? Now, this, this was a legitimate question. And but to justify means he wanted to get basically Jesus' agreement because there was, there, was, there was a conversation culturally. Who's your neighbor? Is it the person next to you? Is it, is it uh, you know, your relatives? And culturally, they had determined that your neighbor was the person in need. So he was looking for a certification on that, that Jesus would agree. Now, Jesus was a rabbi. He was a teacher. He was a trusted teacher. He was, he was somebody who, if you, if you got a seal of approval, if you got justified in your, in your belief system, that was a good thing. He wasn't challenging Jesus. He was actually coming under him. He, he was like, okay, so who's my neighbor? Jesus is, 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 is like, well, let me tell you a story. <laughs> and this was a typical teaching concept, right? The idea of telling a story. This, was, this would not have shocked anyone in the crowd. He goes, uh, you know, this man gets robbed, beaten, stolen from he's laying either naked or in his underwear depending on how you want to visualize things <laughs> on the side of the road and and uh he uh three people walk by right you got the uh the get him in the right order da, 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 find the verses stripped him of his clothes left him half dead oh a priest priest and levite come by and they pass by on the other side but the samaritan so the priest and levite walk by they would have been probably uh, Sadducees. Sadducees uh, obey the written word. They were not ones who delved into revelation. They did not want to hang out with Holy Spirit or whatever God at this point. They, they just were like, what does, the, what does the Torah say? Not what did Moses mean when he wrote it. What does it say? This is what we stand on. I, I know a few Christians that still are very Sadduceical in their, in their approach to the word, right? It's like, no, the Bible says. It's like, <laughs> please, don't get me started. <laughs> so, <laughs> so they walk by. They walk by. They see the man. They walk by. Fine. The Samaritans also only obeyed the written word. So this was not somebody who didn't know the word, didn't, didn't know the Torah, didn't follow the Torah. This was somebody who was very much the, of the same passion when it came to the Torah. They would have obeyed the written word. So these three people come from the same sort of theology. And he sees the man half naked, beaten up, and he picks him up. and or, Well, not at first. He addresses his wounds puts uh, bandages, whatever he had available. He puts them on his horse. He takes them to the hotel or to the inn or to the whatever. And he pays for a room. And he says, listen, I'm going to be gone for a few days. I'm on a trade route. I'll come back. If, if Listen, just please take care of him. Give him food. Change his bandages. Make sure he recovers. I'll pay you whatever I owe you when I get back. And the innkeeper's like, yes. Which is a kind of a cool character, actually, in this whole story. The fact that he was, you know, he could have just taken the money and let the guy die. But he, he continued the process of healing in this man's life. But I'm not here to tell that story. I'm just saying it's a really cool character if you want to tell the story. And 
Jesus finishes the story and he, and he asks the lawyer, he goes, so who was the neighbor? And the lawyer says, the man who showed mercy. The lawyer got the answer correct. It was culturally different than what he went in with. What he went in with was, the person in need is my neighbor. What he walked out with was, I'm the, neighboring is on me. Showing mercy is my responsibility. Now this is, this is where, this is, this is what's, what, <laughs> if you have a reason to love, By its very nature, you have a reason to not love. All right? Let me walk you through this. If I draw a line in the sand, I now have two sides. If, if, if I say that my neighbor is only those in need, then by very nature... Those without need are not my neighbor. If my neighbor are only those who have needs that I can personally meet, then if I can't personally meet their need, I have no responsibility to love them. This is what the priest and Levite did. They, they looked at the need. They knew the need, but they had they, they decided, I can't meet that need. What, whatever the reasons. I, I don't think that they're evil people. They just, they had a concept of love that didn't match up with heaven. Now, this is, I'll give you another illustration. I'm sorry if this ruins some people's uh, uh, drive home. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Let's say you're you're driving with your wife or your significant other or somebody you want to have a significant other. Uh, whatever. Anyways, we'll call it your wife. You can apply it however you'd like. And and she asks that awesome question. Do you love me? And you, of course, answer, yes, oh, yes, I do. And then she says, what about me do you love? Now, guys, you better have an answer. Because if you, if you pause, oh, sweet Lord, what, what, are, you, what are you thinking about? Uh, 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 <laughs> right? Well, what, what about me do you love? Um, well, you're, you have a beautiful face. I love, you're just so beautiful. Oh, that's a good answer, you're thinking. That's a good answer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're so beautiful. Oh, really? So if I was in a car accident, <laughs> you wouldn't love me anymore? Uh, no, 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 that's not what I said, that's not what I said, that's not what I said, I, 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 what I mean is, what, what I mean is, you have, you have perfect skin. <laughs> so if I got burned? No, 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 that's not what I'm saying, that's not what I'm saying, right, right, but the, <laughs> if you start giving reasons, you immediately create reasons not to. Even if what you're trying to say is the right thing. <laughs> Even if you think this is a really good reason to love them. They've got the best reason. But by the very nature of drawing the line, you've created space where love might not exist. Whoa. <laughs> so, The answer, right? The one who's showing mercy. And what does Jesus say? Well, then go and do that. Go and love for no reason. 
Not because the law teaches it. Not because, not because you know, the person's in need. Just love. Just love because, because why? Because you love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and mind, with all your strength. And you can't help but be just like him. Now, <laughs> love everyone because it comes from who you are to them, not based on their need, not based on their need of health, not based on the need of wealth, not based on their need of education. Love flows from you, not for them, not from them, or not, it's not, it just comes from, out of you all the time. Now, sometimes you want to, you want to, you know, it's, well, it's just hard because, because in the Good Samaritan, the priest and Levite, they had reasons to love. They just didn't find it in the person lying on the road, half naked and almost dying. The Samaritan had no reason to love this guy, but he was just like God. The whole system of divine education is predicated on being in community with other people. You have to love God and love others or you miss it all. Remember, he said, what do you need to know? What does the law teach you? What does everything in the law teach you? Every academically sound teaching of Scripture, what does it teach you? That you can't do that without being in community. You can't. You constantly have to be connected to the love of God. You have to be connected to each other. Everyone around you is your neighbor. Everyone you come in contact with. Everyone you see. Everyone that you happen to not see. They're all your responsibility to be neighborly, to show love, to show mercy. It flows from you. You can't say, well, Bob, they are just, they're just not educated enough. I need to teach them something before I can love them. Because you see, they, they voted They just don't know what he stands for. I need to tell them. Then I can, then they're my neighbor. Because neighbors are only those who agree with me. And it's easy to love people who agree with me. Yeah, yeah. So, Bob, now that, now that you agree with me, we can all settle this, this whole sermon thing, right? It's all good. <laughs> oh yeah. Well. Da -da -da. Man, I covered a lot of ground. Here we go. Sorry. I yeah, uh, yeah. Oh, that's a good point. You should make that point, Bob. Yeah. I think through the priest and the Levite. They, you know, walked by this this man they had reasons not to love him not to show mercy could have been any number of things honestly you know uh they would have been unclean uh they weren't related to him they didn't know him it it may be you know they one of them might have thought well you know this is probably god's judgment on him because he's a samaritan and he comes from mixed blood god doesn't really like those guys you know, they don't believe the same. Well, they kind of, they think they, they can't really believe the same thing. <laughs> they go to that other church. So they've got to be wrong somehow. <laughs> and clearly God wants to judge that. So maybe this is all God's will and I just need to leave them alone. I've got places to go. I've got people to meet. I've got, I've got a schedule to keep. 
What, I mean, there's all kinds of reasons, reasonable reasons, when they walked by to say, I don't have the opportunity to pour love on this person. And God will understand. God will understand. But if my neighbor, if my neighbor is anyone I come in contact with, think of what the, what, like for me anyways, I think about the difference it would have made in the Levite's life or in the priest's life had they shown that mercy. Like how would their lives have changed? How would their... How would their lives have changed if they had brought healing to a man who was injured? I, I know many people in this church that have brought healing to people around them. They've prayed for healing, or they've prayed through some sort of internal healing for someone. They've brought life to that person. You, you, wanna, you, wanna, you, you can't help but enjoy the conversation with them. They're just bubbling all the time. Because why? Because they brought healing to somebody. They, they, they were neighborly. They showed mercy to their neighbor. And in showing mercy and showing love, they filtered, they filtered, no, no, they funneled the love of God from heaven to earth. They brought heaven to earth. They brought something of value to somebody they didn't even know. And in doing so, they feel better. They don't, they, that wasn't the plan, but they feel awesome. I think, what would the priest and Levite think if they had stopped? If they had bound up the wounds, if they had brought them to the local hotel? Think of how that would have impacted the people back at the temple that day. The other teachers and rabbis that were sitting around talking about the Torah. Think of, think of the difference that it would have made. We're designed for that kind of activity. God's love is designed to be experienced that way through you to the world. You don't get to choose your family. You don't get to choose your neighbors. You take who God sends. This is, this is also uh, not an excuse, but sometimes you might hear somebody reasoned to say, well, that's all true except, you know, in business. I mean, business has a different, different rules. You know, I'm in sales. And you, it's cutthroat. Real estate market is begging for places to sell right now. I mean, you, you, we have to, you, I, can't, I can't be neighborly. I might, lose a, I might lose a client. There's a way. There's got to be. Or this passage is in truth. This concept doesn't work if it doesn't work everywhere. You could look online. You could look online and you see an opportunity. Somebody writes something and you think, oh, they just need some help. Jesus, I'm going to help them. I, 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 I honestly, I, I hold back a lot online because I don't want to lose people because I there are I have a feed that is filled with half of which are mad about something and the other half are happy about the same thing so I don't comment on nothing because I don't want them to know but but in the last three days like my feed is blown up with some goofy sneaker that Nike put out right I don't know I don't even know I'm not that's all you need to know if you don't know after don't don't go look it up but there are people that are in absolute epileptic seizures over this. Which brings me to my next passage. Also, Jesus, you have heard it said, love your neighbor and hate your enemy. <laughs> oh, you see, some of you are like, Oh, I was all about loving my neighbor. This was a really good message about loving my neighbor. I could really love my neighbor. And now you have to bring in my enemies. Oh, I'm, 
I know the feeling. I, I know the feeling because I've had these kind of discussions, right? People are like, well, I like to surround myself with people I love, you know, so that, so that I get all kinds of warm fuzzies from everywhere I go, and it's just great. I have such a sweet community, such an amazing, sorry, that would be a girl. The guys are like, yeah, I have a good group of guys I like to hang out with. But either way, like, it's like, oh, I like, yeah, okay, I can love, I can show mercy to my neighbor. I can even show some mercy to people, you know, that maybe aren't as neighborly as I think they should be. But I, you know, I'm good. And Jesus says, you've heard it said, love your neighbor. I'm thinking, yes, from you. You said that. <laughs> and hate your enemy. Uh, uh, well, you didn't actually say that, but... It's implied. I tell you, love your enemies. Pray for those who persecute you. Oh, uh, uh. okay. Love your enemies. I can, I can kind of show love to enemies by maybe not making life worse for them. Right? Like, you see the mess that they've created, and you think, hmm, I could pour, fire, I could pour gas on that fire, but I won't. I'm going to show the love of God. I'm just going to step away. I'm going to walk away. I'm going to walk away and laugh at them die. I just, I mean, no, no, Lord. Lord Jesus, bless them. Hmm. Then God says, but pray for the pray, pray for them. You mean for their destruction? I can do that, Jesus. <laughs> Dear Jesus, destroy them. You know what they deserve. Give it to them. Give it to them. Yeah, yeah, right? I mean, I'm, and I know, I'm, I know if you're here and you're not upset by what I'm saying, then you're weird as well. Because trust me, there are entire worldwide ministries built on the concept of praying death and destruction on everybody who disagrees with them. So this is a common deal, unfortunately, in the world of Christianity. You pray for your enemy. And you pray for those who persecute you so that God will judge them and send them all to hell. Oh. Uh, let's keep reading. <laughs> that you might be children of your Father in heaven. He causes the sun to rise on the evil and the good. He sends rain to the righteous and the unrighteous. He treats everyone the same. Why? Because he doesn't need a reason to love you. Because he's love. He's love. He's, he, Jesus, why do you love me? Because of me. I just love. I just love. Yeah, but there's got to be a reason. I mean, look at me compared to, you know my neighbor <laughs> nobody here i mean that other church all you guys are clearly loved by god but we we just do right we 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 give me a reason god's like i i, I love that's why i love you is because i'm love i remind you of that because of the next verse if you love those who love you what reward would you get are not even tax collectors doing that and if you greet only your own people, or if you only talk with those online that are like you, what, what are you doing that's any more than anyone else? Don't even the pagans do that. Oh, but I love Jesus. Yeah, but who are you acting like? Be perfect, therefore, as your heavenly Father is perfect. He's like, listen, you want to be like Jesus. You want to be Verse 45 there, it says that you may be children of your Father in heaven. You want to be just like your Father? Then you love them all. Because it doesn't depend on what they're doing. It doesn't depend on what shoes they're selling. It doesn't depend on the music they're writing. It doesn't matter what political party they're part of. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter because love comes from you. Being neighborly is your responsibility. Showing mercy is is your flow from heaven. This is the love of God. You want to be like your father in heaven? You love everybody. Not because there's a reason to love, but because you are loved. 
And you're just like your Father in heaven, who reigns on the just and the unjust. And he treats them all the same. When you're able to do that, you grow in your faith of the ability of love to break down whatever's in the way of love between that person and heaven. When you're able to show love at that level, <laughs> when you want to be just like him, to bring heaven to earth, then you have created an opportunity for whatever's in the way of, that, of the destiny and identity of the person who you think, or no, you don't, who you used to think was an enemy. You look at the truth within them and you're able to, to look at them with the eyes of love. You're able to behave in such a way around them that you start to break down whatever is keeping them from truly stepping into what God created them to be. And it doesn't have to do with education. It doesn't have to do with your ability uh, to do anything except show love to that person. It's, it's fascinating to me. Some people, you might, you might look at it like... Uh, like, you know, within them is like a golden statue of who they truly are. And on the outside of that statue is just a ton of hardened clay. And love has the ability to come into that and not just start swinging an axe. But they're going to, love just has a way of starting to break down what that hard shell is on the outside. It finds cracks in the mortar. And eventually the shell just falls off. And their true identity just shines out. What I find fascinating is sometimes you could actually do that for somebody. And they, their true identity shines around you. <laughs> and they don't know how to act like that anywhere else. And you become like this amazing resource of a life-giving place for them to hang out. They don't even know why they want to hang out with you. They just say weird things like, well, I just feel myself around you. I don't know. I just, I don't know. It's so comfortable in your, in your house. I don't know. It's, I just like being around you. All you have to do internally is just smile and be like, awesome. Well, hang out all you want. You don't have to say, well, what am I doing that makes you feel so comfortable? You don't need to know. It's just who you are. When you're, when you're oozing the love of God, it's just who you are. You don't even have to know. Because it's not a knowing. It's not an education. It's a divine connection to who you are. You're just flowing with the love. Sometimes it's like fog. The person that you're, you're, you have the opportunity to show love to, is just they just live in a fog. And you're just, I picture it like, like you know, red eyes of fire. You're just going to stare at the fog. You're going to stare in there and be like, I know you're in there. The fog's like billowing all around you. You're like, irrelevant, 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 irrelevant. I don't care. I don't care. I don't care. I don't care. I'm looking. I'm looking. And slowly those, those eyes of fire, oh, like the Father God who has eyes of flames, the fog just starts to lift. And the truth of who they are is right there. And they see more clearly. Because of what? Because you're just being a good neighbor. You're just showing mercy for no reason. Oh, man. Sometimes, sometimes it is, I know it's not easy. I know a dear, dear, dear woman. She's in her 80s. She grew up in a, in a home where there was, there, it was ugly, okay? Abuse from brothers, father, uncles. She did the work 
of connecting to God. She did the work of releasing all the hard stuff. She stepped into her true identity, and I know this woman went to the deathbed of her father. And without being asked, just said, Dad, I forgive you. (laughs) Do you have any idea what love does? It didn't matter that his whole life he had created this hard shell around uh, 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 the truth of who he was. Love walked into his, to his deathbed and said, boom, I'm going to bust you open. Fascinating what that released to the family, the sisters that started to come to her, the brothers that she was able to also speak to and say, you know, I forgive you. They didn't ask for it. But they reaped the benefits of it, just like the man who was, who was stripped naked on the side. He did not ask for help. He couldn't ask for help. And the Samaritan comes and just picks him up. Like, I, got, I got you. I got you. <laughs> I, I love love. I just do. I, it's, it's, <laughs> it's so powerful. It's so much more powerful than fear. And you have it. Do you understand that? You literally, you literally have the opportunity to destroy fear in this culture by just being neighborly. This is awesome. One of my all-time favorite stories in the Bible is Jesus and Legion. Now, Legion's not the guy's name. It's just the number of devils he had in him. And that's the only name we know, which blows my mind. <laughs> I think of all the guys that we know the names of, you couldn't, you couldn't think to put this guy's name in there. Just Legion. Oh, man, I want to know this guy. Fascinating story, right? Jesus is in the boat. The, the, everybody thinks they're going to die. And then Jesus calms the storm and everybody is like freaking out because they're like, what kind of man is this? And they get to the shoreline and, and, <laughs> and Jesus, I, I, I picture Je- like the boat whoosh, comes up on the shore and Jesus like jumps out. But while he's jumping out, This being is running at him. This being who they said, you know, had been chained and bound many times and broke the chain. So he is, he is, he has supernatural strength. He's possessed by many devils. I picture him, I mean, he's buck naked, but it says that he's, 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 you know, he's got, he's just ugly. He's ripped open with sores and, and infections from running and cutting himself on the caves and caverns at night and running through the trees in the in the middle of the night as his feet are all torn up his hair is like bushy and greasy at the same time he's got twigs and bugs his 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 beard is all over the place he's got spittle running down he's got he's gaunt because he can barely eat But the devils keep them hardly alive all the time because they want to stay there. But they're not going to let them feast because they're all about death. They're all about destruction. And his eyes are wild. And he sees Jesus coming across the, the lake. And the demons inside are panicked because they know who's coming. And they run at him, I think, to try and scare him. <laughs> and, and I don't know about I, I don't know about you. I do know that often people who are struggling also have no concept of personal space. 
So I picture this guy running to Jesus. Like he's, first of all, if you're running at me at a beach and you're naked, I, I'm, 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 even if you're not ugly, I'm like, mm, no, not looking. I'm not looking, honey. I'm not looking. I'm not looking, honey. I'm not looking. I'm not looking. I'm, I'm looking at the sand, looking at the sand, right? <laughs> and I picture all the disciples in the boat going, Jesus, 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 get back in the boat. 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 Jesus, Jesus, hey, 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 hey. This guy's just running. Jesus, son of the most high God. The disciples are like, wait, what? Whoa, hey, what did he call him? And this guy just comes sliding in on the dirt, just like right here in Jesus' face. And of course, he's breathing heavy, and his breath reeks, and his teeth are all over the place. What little teeth he has. No, I'm, no, I like, I... Do you understand what he saw? He looked into the eyes of love. There was no fear in Jesus. He goes sliding in. Whoosh, and Jesus is like, Hi. I've been waiting for you. Whoa! God! <laughs> Oh, man, deep inside this guy, he hears something he hadn't heard in forever. I've been waiting for you. I'm so glad you came down to see me. I mean, it was, it was, it had to, it was earth shattering to this man. Earth shattering because he heard something he hadn't heard in a long time, not forever, because he lived in the village at one time. He has a mother and a father. In that village, I'm guessing. Blows my mind. Why? Because when Jesus is all done with this guy in a matter of hours, it says he's like the, 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 the town shows up, it says he's seated and clothed and in his right mind. Oh, wait. Like, I know. I read that verse, I'm like, whoa, where, where clothes? Where did he get those? We're at the beach. He's, trust me, it's a private beach at this point. He's the only guy that goes to this beach. <laughs> he does not share the shoreline <laughs> very nicely with anyone else. So, for me, my little brain... There's only one person on the beach that's going to share his clothes with this guy. I just picture Jesus taking off whatever wrap thing he's got. He just wraps this guy up. Now it's Jesus standing in his shorts. Doesn't bother Jesus at all. The disciples are just dumbfounded in this boat, right? They're just absolutely dumbfounded. They, have, they, are, they are watching love in action at levels that they had no concept even existed. They're learning by the second of what heaven looks like. It's, it's a fascinating story. Because it's all about love. And I know it's all about love because, well, okay, so Jesus, they asked Jesus to leave because, frankly, this kind of power freaks people out. When you change culture, you become dangerous to the people who like the culture the way it is. So they beg Jesus to leave. It's, instead of, you would think, they'd be like, wow, you literally solved the biggest problem we have in, the, in this society right now. We had this guy, we kept trying to chain him up, tie him up, beat him up contain him. We couldn't do it. You just like, boom, like he's literally seated and clothed and in his right mind. Like, I don't know, could you stay a few more days? There's a few other people that are close to this that we'd like you to talk to. I don't know. 
We've heard rumors that you, you know, that you heal the sick. Maybe you could come up to our hospital. No, they're like, please, could you leave? And Jesus gets in the boat. He doesn't say, no, you need me. You have no idea how bad you are. You don't even get it. I came here to liberate you. No. He's like, oh, all right, I'll get in the boat. And the guy, the guy, <laughs> the guy jumps up. He's like, no, 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 don't leave, don't leave, don't leave. Take me with you. I know these people. <laughs> I, bet, I know how they treat people. I, I trust me. I don't want to live here. And Jesus looks at him and he says, for me, one of the most awesome descriptions of the gospel I've ever seen. Because he says, go back home, go back to the village, and just tell everybody what the love of God's done for you. But oh, he doesn't know the gospel. He doesn't know the right verses. What? What? You're just going to leave them alone? You're not going to disciple them? Bless God. He's fine. <laughs> As a matter of fact, he's actually better off than, he, than all these people anyway. So he sends them back. And tradition says that that whole region became followers of Jesus. One man who only told the story of what the love of God had done for him. Yeah, that's the gospel. That's loving your neighbor. That's fascinating to me. Because we all think, no, you guys don't, because you guys are awesome. Many people think, right, my neighbor are, are people I basically agree with, nice people who might have a little need. You know, I can donate some canned goods. I can, and th all that's fine. But loving your enemy is tough. Unless you're just love. And then you don't have enemies. And you don't have fear. And you don't have any reason not to. And then you're just like your father in heaven. And then you're holy just like he's holy. You're perfect just the way he's perfect. It's not, it's not a law that you need to follow. It's just a relationship. It's community. It's connection, and you can't do this alone. You can't learn this alone. You can't live this alone. We have to do it together. When Jesus rode into Jerusalem, this message about what Jesus was bringing to the culture hit a peak level. People wanted to be ruled by love. They wanted to be ruled by healing. They wanted to be ruled in a culture that would permeate mercy and grace to everyone. And they celebrated his arrival. Woo! Yes! We're going to we're going to kill our enemies. That's <laughs> unfortunate. We're going to kill all the Romans. Jesus is going to take over the world. Woo! And at some level, I think Jesus is, is like, oh, uh, well, no, I'm not the, uh, it's really up to you guys. It's not up to Jesus. Because he could have ruled the world. It wasn't, it wasn't up to him. He's like, it's, it's up to you. It's up to you. It's up to you. You be the father on earth. You be heaven on earth. You be a good neighbor. That's all I got. I hope you guys have a great day. Let's be neighborly to one another. <laughs> Thanks for coming. See you next week for Easter. Oh, yes. Alia, prayer teams, definitely. If you don't have a neighbor, <laughs>
You can come up and find one up here. Our prayer teams will be up here. No, no, prayer teams, we do need you up here. I'm not kidding about that. Everyone's welcome to come up.